Tom Lee having a good time strat said today that they think that if the April CPI stays the same next week, it will show that car insurance may have a bigger impact on the CPI than people think. This might make more people bet on the Fed. There is still time to buy because cuts are good for stocks. This week, stocks went up, which I consider a good sign. Fun and I agree. It's possible that the CPI report next week will show that inflation has gone down. You have to really wonder if we're going to go into a recession after seeing the numbers we got today. A good example is the Michigan Consumer Confidence Report that we got today. We thought it would go up to 78 from 77.2 last month, but it only got to 67.4. That's a big 11-point miss. It was thought that Michigan customers would buy 77.3, but they only bought 76. That wasn't good. Things were 68.8 in Michigan right now, but they were 60 or 79 last month, so this is a 10-point change. People thought this number would go up to 79.5, so this is a big drop. You should know that these are just rough numbers. There will be final numbers and, if you will, changes. But holy moly, those are really bad numbers. Also very bad news, the expectation for inflation over the next five years was 3.1%, but it was only 3%, and the expectation for inflation over the next one year was 3.5%, but it was only 3.1%, down from 3.2% last month. There are more worries about stagflation today because inflation estimates are going up and people don't like the business at all. The Russell 2000 is down almost 1% and the NASDAQ is down about 0.2% because of this point of view. Today, the S&P is up 0.18% and the Dow is up about 3 tenths of 1%. Concerns about rising prices are making people less confident, which is the most important story on CNBC. This is bad news for the Fed today and I'm even more sure than before that the Fed is asleep at the wheel. This is because people thought inflation would go up, but they felt terrible, which normally means they're spending less, which is bad for the economy. Both the ISM Services Index and the Lei Business Activity Index are going down. This comes after the jobless rate went up, but not as much as was thought. Also, last week's non-farm payrolls report showed that over 60,000 jobs were lost, which was less than thought. Walmart, Target, Dollar General, Coke, and other companies have also said that the consumer is beginning to crack, which is another bad sign for the economy. The Fed might have forgotten how fast things can go badly for the economy. This story from the New York Times on September 29, 2007, says that all what people buy making people more likely to want to cut back on their spending it went up more than expected in August, but a key sign of inflation made people spend less. They went up 0.6% last month, which was more than hoped. It was the biggest rise since April 2007, which was on September 29, 2007. By November 8, 2007, Banky has told Congress that the economy is slowing down. What happened after five weeks, on January 14, 2008, a few weeks later, on January 14, 2008, is in the title in 2007. Jerome Powell told Congress that things were going to get worse on January 14, 2008. The people in the U.S. spent a lot less than they did. Spending by consumers seems to be slowing down more and more. Higher energy prices were a big reason why people didn't spend as much in 2007 and 2008. This sounds a lot like what's happening now. Not that I think you should run away, sell everything, and turn into a bear. Especially if you're participating in the stock market as a whole, I think now is a good time to get some extra cash to be a little safer. There is no doubt that we will face a slowdown. The real question is not whether we will or not. As for how long the Fed can handle a little economic weakness with rate cuts, that is the real question. Will they fall asleep at the wheel for too long and cause too much economic pain? To be honest, I don't trust the Fed as much as I used to. I believe this is because it was way too late for the Fed to start raising rates. This is what the government said today. Fed Bowman said that the rules should stay the same for a little while longer. It's okay. Fed Logan said that no one knows for sure if the policy is strict enough. Don't you get it? It's being talked about whether interest rates are high enough even though the economy is starting to slow down as shown by the numbers. To explain, when you see that the economy is slowing down in the data, it's usually too late. This is because data tends to show what's really going on in the world very late. Fed Logan also says it's too early to think about interest rates going down and the Fed in a strong economy. Logan says that neutral rates might need to be raised. This makes people wonder if rates are already too high. Should the markets crash from here on out? I don't think that at all. This makes me think that you should be a little more careful or maybe a little more defensive about where you put your money in the markets overall. I've said this a million times, I don't like the NASDAQ or the SP as they are right now. 
These stocks are priced just right. There isn't a discount in the SP or NASDAQ right now. There's just not okay, none nada, no discount, and no deals. There are, however, stocks that have been cleaned out, such as PayPal Fubo. When interest rates go down, my stocks in SoFi and Tesla will do very well. It will be important to find a mix between rates going down and inflation going down as the economy gets worse. Tom Lee is right when he says that rate cuts will have a big effect on the small cap interest rate sensitive part of our markets. Tom Lee is not super bullish about the SP or NASDAQ kind of headline basis, but small caps and interest rate sensitive stocks could do very well now also as Tom Lee has pointed out on his X account. I recommend you give Tom Lee a follow over there. Commodity prices falling like oil are going to have a very positive impact to CPI, so preferably inflation starts to plummet, giving the Fed a reason to start cutting rates before the economy weakens too much. That's the bullish outlook here now ever. Since the start of 2024, oil went from, you know, $65 a barrel to $8,383 and a half. No wonder inflation has been ramping up in 2024. But since April 12th, and really since the start of April, oil went from about $834 at the high down to where you are today at $754 per barrel. You've actually seen some. Disinflation in the oil markets in April and now in May that should be good for next week's CPI report that should be good at least if this continues for May's CPI report as well oil is down about 1-1-12% on the day today. Now coming next week, week on Monday you're going to get fed we expect both the reported and core PPI to come in at 0.2% on Tuesday which is the end of the month. But at 10 a.m. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell will give a speech. From what the Fed official said today it sounds like Trump will be a harsh hawk next week. This morning's Michigan Consumer Sentiment Poll, on the other hand, would make you think, whoa, something just clicked in the consumer. Next week, Tuesday might be a big day. Wednesday is going to be even bigger. Most likely, you will get core CPI from one month to the next. That number should be at least 0.3%. Could make it more likely for the markets to expect more cuts. What's also interesting about Wednesday is that it's also retail sales day. Retail sales are expected to grow by 0.4% month over month in April. The March number was 0.7% higher than this month's, so that would be a step down as well. It wouldn't surprise me if retail sales actually went down because 0.4% is still pretty strong month over month after a 0.7% number. It wouldn't surprise me if that number came in weak. If inflation numbers are low, it could be good news for stocks next week. The markets currently have a 74.6% chance of a cut happening on July 31st. My prediction is that we will get the first rate cut on July 31st because I think things are going to get worse from here, but I don't think they'll go into a full-blown recession by July. It's possible, though, because July 31st is almost August and we'll have a lot of different data points coming out until then, like CPI reports, retail sales numbers, GDP numbers, and other things. But I do think the markets will start to expect the first cut Lee, which can be very good for small caps and other interest rate sensitive parts of our markets. I wouldn't be surprised if things really start to get worse by September and we get another cut in September. That's two cuts this year. Then, depending on the economy and inflation, we could get another cut in November and another in December. In reality, you could expect cuts this year if the economy is really starting to get worse. I believe there will be at least three cuts, but I don't think it's impossible for there to be four. With the most recent information about the economy, there is a 35% chance that rates will be cut four times this year. It looks like things will not go well. I think stocks, especially small caps that are sensitive to interest rates, will do better over the next few months as long as we don't have a recession and everyone doesn't join the recession camp again. This has been going on for so long and so many people have been wrong. Tom Lee wrote on X not long ago, in the past when gas prices went up, inflation rates went up by up to 3.5% which is very true. Because of this, things like petrol prices and expectations of inflation have both gone up lately, which makes a lot of sense. That's where many people check to see what inflation is all about. Inflation rates are likely to rise in the future if you go to the gas station and think, damn, petrol prices have gone up 20 cents in two days. This isn't a big surprise. The market might think the Fed will raise rates after next week's April CPI report back to two or two and a half cuts from 1.8% to 1.7% for the SP500 week to week. Remember to never short a doll. The April CPI report comes out tomorrow, the May 15th. It is the most important day for the market. We still think this is good news for stocks. The Even if the report confirms what most people think it will say that net sales are up 0.331% month over month. This is what Tom Lee means when he says that the markets will probably price in more rate cuts from the Fed even if inflation turns out to be what was expected, 
there is no longer any fear or greed on CNN business. The fear and greed measure is now 48. Yesterday, it was at 44, which is a scary level, so that looks a little better. Very few stocks, mostly small caps, are below their 50-day moving average. This means that 2.25% of stocks have broken below their 50-day moving average. Over the last 50 days, 53.5% of stocks have been above that line. The mood indicator on SPY is very negative today, 23, and it was very negative yesterday, 42. People seem to have changed their minds and are now a little less sure about where the markets are at the time. The most recent poll of AI investors, which came out two days ago, is also very interesting. At the moment, 35.4% of investors are neutral, which is a big number, while 40.8% of investors are bullish. It's been almost a year since there was so much balance. What do you think about this? 23.8% of buyers don't know what to do. Go down if you haven't already. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel in the comments part below. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next film.